This is part two for the recording of Ozzie Billings essay, Two Concepts of Liberty. This is section four of part four, titled as Self Realization. The only true method of attaining freedom, we are told, is by use for critical reason, understanding what is necessary, what is contingent. If I'm a schoolboy, or but the simplest truth is mathematics, obtrude themselves as obstacles to the free functioning of my mind, and theorems whose necessity I do not understand. It is pronounced to be true by some external authority, and present themselves to me as a foreign body, which I am expected to mechanically absorb into my system. But when I understand the functions, the symbols, the axioms, the formation and transformation rules, the logic whereby the conclusions are obtained grants that it, these things. Cannot be otherwise because they appear to follow from the laws that govern the processes of my own reason. Then, mathematical truth is no longer obtrude themselves as external entities, entities forced upon me, which I must receive, whether I want it not, but as something which I now freely will, in the course of the natural functioning of my own rational activity. For the Manumentation, the proof of these theorems, is a part of the free exercise of his natural reason and capacity. For the musician, after he has assimilated the pattern of the composer's score and has made the composer's ends his own, the playing the music is not obedience to external laws, compulsion, and a barrier to liberty, but a free. I impended exercise. The player is not bound to the score as ox to the plow, or the factory worker to the machine. He has absorbed the score into his own system. As by understanding it, identified it with himself, I change it from an impediment to free activity into elements that activity itself. Would it apply to music or mathematics? Must we are told, in principle, apply to all other obstacles which present themselves as so many lumps of external stuff, blocking free self-development. This is a program of enlightened rationalism from Spinoza to the latest and times unconscious disciples of Hegel, Sartre, or Day. What you know. That of which you understand the necessity, the rational necessity, you cannot, while remaining rational, want to be otherwise. For to want something to be other than what it must be is, given the premises, the necessities that govern the world, to be pro tanto, either ignorant or irrational. Passions, prejudices, fears, neuroses spring from ignorance, and take the form of myths, illusions, to be ruled by myths, whether they spring from the vivid imaginations of unscrupulous charlatans who deceive us in order to exploit us, or from psychological or sociological causes, is a form of heteronomy. Of being dominated by outside factors in direction unnecessarily willed by the agent. The scientific determinists of the 18th century suppose that a study of the sciences of nature and the creation of the sciences of a society on the same model will make the operation of such causes transparently clear, and thus enable individuals to recognize their own part. In the working of a rational world, frustrated only when misunderstood, knowledge liberates, and it pickles taught long ago by automatically eliminating irrational fears and desires. Herder, Hegel, and Marx 
substitute their own voluntaristic models of social life for the old, older mechanical ones, but believed no less than their opponents than to understand the world to be freed. They merely differed from them, in stressing the part played by change, the growth in what made human beings human. Social life cannot be understood by um, analogy drawn from mathematics or physics. One must also understand the history, that is, the peculiar laws of continuous growth, whether by didactical conflicts or otherwise, the going individuals and groups in their interplay with each other and with the nature. So to grant this is according to these thinkers to fall into a particular kind of era, namely the belief that the human nature is a static, that its essential properties are the same everywhere and at all times, that is governed by unwearying natural laws, whether they are conceived in theological or mathematistic terms which entails a fallacious corollary that is why the lawgiver can in principle create a perfectly harmonious society at any time by appropriate education and legislation because a rational man in all ages and countries must always demand the same unaltering satisfactions of the same unaltering basic needs Hegel believed that his contemporaries and indeed all his predecessors misunderstood the nature of institution because they did not understand the laws, the rationally intelligible laws, since they spring from the operation reason that created the alter institutions and transform a human character and human action. Marxists and disciples maintain that the, the path of human beings was obstructed not only by natural forces all the imperfections of their own character, but even more by the workings of their own social institutions, which they had originally created, not always consciously, for certain purposes, but for the functioning the systematic came to misconceive, and which thereupon became obstacles in the creator's progress. It offered a social and economic Hypothesis to account for the inevitability of such misunderstanding, in particular the illusion that such man made arrangement or independent forces as inescapable as the laws of nature. As instances of such feudal objective forces, according to the laws of supply and demand, all of the institutions of property, all of the internal division of society into rich and poor or owners and workers, or many, are altering human categories. Not until we had reached a stage at which the spell of these illusions could be broken, that is, until enough men reached the social state that alone enabled them to understand that these laws, institutions, and institutions are themselves a work with human mind and the hands, historically needed in their day, and later mistaken for exorable object powers, could the old world be destroyed, a more adequate liberating social machinery substituted, were, ens were enslaved by despots, institutions or beliefs or neuroses which can be removed only by being analyzed and understood were imprisoned by evil spirits which we have ourselves, albeit uh, not consciously, created, and get exor exorcised um, only by becoming conscious and acting appropriately. Indeed, for Marxist understanding is proper action, I am afraid if, and only if I plan my life in accordance with my own will, plans entail rules. A rule does not oppress me or enslave me if I impose it on myself consciously or accept it freely, having understood it, whether it was invented by me or by others, provided that it is rational, that is to say, conform to the necessity of things, to understand why things must be as they must be, it will will them to be so. Knowledge liberates not by offering us more open possibility among which we can make our choices, but by 
preserving us from the frustration of attempting the impossible. To want necessary law to be other than they are is to be prey to an irrational desire, a desire that it must be X, it should also not be X, to go for the I believe the law to be other than what they necessarily are is to be insane. That is a metaphysical part of rationalism. The notion for liberty contained in it is not a naked concept of field, ideally without obstacles, a wank in which nothing obstructs me, but the notion of self direction or self control. I can do what I will with my own. I am. A rational being. Whether I can demonstrate myself as being necessary, as incapable of being otherwise in a rational society, that in a society directed by rational minds towards goals such as a rational being would have, I cannot, being rational, wish to sweep it out of my way. I assimilate it into my substance as I do the laws of logic. Of mathematics, of physics, the rules of art, the principle that govern everything which I understand, therefore will, the rational purpose by which I can never be swapped, since I cannot want it to be other than it is. This is a positive doctrine for liberation by reason. Socialized forms of fate are widely disparate and are opposed to each other, and they are, and the heart of many of the Nationalist, communist, author, authoritarian, and totalitarian craze for our day. In the course of its evolution, how wandered far from its rationalist moorings. Nevertheless, it is of it's this freedom that in democracies, in dictatorships, is argued about and fought for in many parts of the world today. Without attempting to trace the historical evolution of this idea, I should like to comment on some of its vicissitudes. Why, the temple of uh, Sarasvati. Those who believe in freedom as rational self-direction were bound sooner or later to consider how this was to be applied, not merely. To a man in a life, but to his relations with other members of society, the most individualistic among them, and the rule so canned the feature, certainly began as individualists, can at some point ask themselves whether rational life, not only for the individual, but also for society, was possible, and if so, how it was to be achieved, I wish to be free to live as. My rational will, my real self, commands. But so must others be. How am I to avoid collisions with their wills? Where is the frontier that lies between my rationally determined rights and I, and the identical rights of others? <coughs> Excuse, me. <coughs> Excuse me. For if I am rational, I can't deny there is a right for me. Must for the same reasons be right for others. Or rational like me, a rational free state cannot be a state governed by just laws. All rational men would freely accept that is to say, such laws as they would themselves have enact, and they being asked of what as rational beings they demanded. Hence, the frontiers would be such as all rational men would consider to be the right of frontiers of a rational being. But who, in fact, was to determine what these frontiers are? A word. Thinkers of this type argue that if moral and political problems were genuine, as、uh, surely they are, they must, in principle, be solvable. That is to say, they must exist one or the only one true solution to any problem. All truths, good in principle. Be discarded by any rational thinker. It demonstrates so clearly that all other rational men could not but accept them. Indeed, this was、uh, already, to a large extent, the case in the new natural sciences. On this assumption, the problem of political liberty was 
Solomon by establishing a just order that would give to each man all the freedom to which a rational being, a rational being was entitled. My claim to unfettered freedom, a prima facie, at times not to be reconciled with your equally unqualified claim, but the rational solution for one problem cannot collide with the equally true solution of another. For the two truths cannot logically be incompatible. Therefore, a just order must, in principle, be discoverable. An order of which the rules make possible quick solutions to all possible problems that could arise in it. This ideal harmonious state affairs was sometimes imagined as a garden of Eden before the fall of man, from which. We were expelled, but for which we are still filled with a longing, was、well, a golden age still before us, in which men, having become rational, will no longer be either directed or,、uh, nor alienated or frustrated to one another. The existing societies of justice and equality are ideals which still call for some measure for coercion. Because a premature lifting of social controls might lead to the oppression of the weaker and the stupider, or by the stronger, abler, or more energetic and unscrupulous. Well, it is only irrationality on the part of man, according to this doctrine, that leads them to wish to oppress, or exploit, or humiliate one another. Rational man will respect the principle of reason, each other, and like all desire to fight or dominate one another. The desire to dominate itself a symptom of irrationality and can not and can be explained or cured by rational method. Spinoza offers one kind of explanation or remedy; they go another. Marxism a third. Some of these theories may members to some degree. Supplement each other; others are non-combinable. But they all assume that in a society of perfectly rational beings, the laws for domination over men will be absent or ineffective. The existence of all craving for oppression will be the first symptom of the true solution to the problems of social life as now being raised. It can be put in another way. Freedom is a self mastery. The elimination of obstacles to my will, whatever these obstacles may be. The resistance of nature of my ungoverned passions, of irrational institutions, the opposing, of the opposing wills or behavior of others. Nature I can list in principle or with mode, by technical means. And shape to my will, but how am I to treat recalcitrant human beings? I must, if I can, impose my will on them too, mold them to my pattern, cast parts for them in my play. But will this not mean that I alone can am free, while they are slaves? It will be so if my plan has nothing to do with their wishes or values, only with my own. If my plan is fully rational, it will allow for the full development of their true natures, the realization of their capacity for rational decisions, for making the best themselves as a part of the realization of my own true self. All true solutions for all genuine problems must be compatible. More than this, they must fit into a single whole. But this is what is meant by calling. Them all rational as universal harmonious harmonious. Each man has his specific character, abilities, aspirations, ends. If I grasp both what these ends and nature are, and how they all relate to one another, I can at least in principle, if I have the knowledge and the strength, satisfy them all. So long as the nature and the purposes in question are rational. Rationality is knowing things and people for what they are. 
must not use a stone to make violins or try to make a born violin players play flutes. If the universe is governed by reason, then there will be no need for coercion. The correct plan life will all will co coincide with the full freedom. The freedom of rational self-direction for all. This will be so if and only if the plan is the true plan, the one unique pattern which alone fulfills the claims of reason. Laws will be the rules which reason prescribes. The only things axiom to those whose reason is dormant, who do not understand the true needs of their own real selves. So long as each player recognizes the place the past set him by reason, the faculties that understand its true nature and discerns its true ends, there will be no conflict. Each man will be a liberated, self-directed actor in the cos cosmic drama. The Spinoza tells us that children, although they are coerced, are not slaves. Because they obey others, they obey others, giving in their own interests, and then the subject of true commonwealth is no slave because the common interests must include his own. Similarly, Locke says there is no law, there is no freedom, because the rational laws are directions to a man's proper interest or general good. And and that, since such laws are what hedges us from bogs and precipices, they you deserve the name of a confinement. It speaks of a desire to escape from such laws as being irrational, forms of license, and brutish, and so on. Montanscu, forgetting his liberal moments, speaks of a Political liberty as being not the permission to do what we want, or even what the laws allow us, but only the power of doing what we all to will, which Kant virtually repeats. Burke proclaims the individual's rights to be restraining his own interests because the presumed consent of every rational creature is in unison with the predisposed order for things. The common assumption of these thinkers and of many a schoolman before them and Jacobin communists of them is that the rational ends of our true natures must coincide or to be made to coincide. However, violently our poorly ignorant, desire ridden, passionate, empirical selves may cry out against this process. Freedom is not freedom to do what is irrational, or stupid, or wrong. To force empirical selves into the tight pattern is not tyranny, but liberation. Rousseau tells me that if I freely surrender all the parts of my life to society, I create an entity which, because it has been built in an equality of sacrifice for all its members, cannot wish to hurt any one of them. In such a society, we are informed, it can be nobody's interest to match anyone else. In giving myself to all, I give myself to none, and give back as much as I lose, with enough new force to preserve my new gains. Can tell us that when the individual has entirely abandoned his wild, lawless freedom, to find it again unimpaired in a state of independence according to law, that alone is the true freedom. For well, this dependence is the work of my own will acting as a lawgiver. Liberty suffers from being incompatible with authority, becomes virtually identical with it. This is the source and language of all the declarations of the rights man in the 18th century. If all those who look upon society and the design constructed according to the rational laws are the wise lawgiver, all of nature, all of history, 
all of the supreme being. Ben Tham, almost alone, doggedly went on repeating that the bits of laws were not deliberate but restrained. Every law is an infraction of liberty, even if such infraction leads to an increase of the sum of liberty. So underlying assumptions have been correct if the method of solving social problems resembles the way in which a solution to the problems of the natural sciences are found. It reasons with what rationalists see said that it was. All this would the members follow. In the ideal case, liberty coincides with law, autonomy with authority. A law which forbids me to do what I could not as a thing be. Considerably wish to do is not a strength of my freedom. In the ideal society composed of wholly responsible beings, rules because I should scarcely be conscious of them of them would gradually wither away. Only one social movement was bold enough to render this assumption quite explicit, except its consequences that for the anarchists. Though all forms of liberalism founded on the rationalist metaphysics are less or more watered down versions of this creed. In due course, the thinkers who bend their energies to the solutions of problem on these lines can be faced with the question of how in practice men were to be made rational in this way. Clearly they must be educated, for the uneducated are irrational, it roamers and need to be coerced. If only to make life tolerable for the rational, if they are to live in the same society and not be compelled to withdraw to a desert to some Olympian height, or some Olympian height, but the only kid who cannot be expected to understand or cooperate with the purposes of the educators. Education, says Fichtet, must inevitably work in such a way that you will later recognize the reasons for what I am doing now. Children cannot be expected to understand why they are compelled to go to school, nor the ignorant that is for the moment the majority of mankind why they may to obey the laws that will presently make them rational. Compulsion is also a kind of education. They learn a great virtue of obedience to superior persons. If you can understand your own interests as a rational being, I cannot expect to consult you or bide your wishes in the course of making you rational or must, in the end, force you to be protected against smallpox, even though you may not wish it. Even Milne is prepared to see that I may forcefully prevent a man from crossing a bridge if he, there is no time to warn him that is about to collapse. For I know, or am justified in assuming that he cannot wish to fall into the river, into the water. Fichet knows what the uneducated Germans at the time wishes to be or do better than he can possibly know them for himself. The sage knows you better be, the sage knows you better than you know yourself. If you are the victim of your passions, the slave living the heterominous life blind unable to understand your true goals. You want to be a human being. Is the aim of the state to satisfy your wish? Compulsion is justified by education for future insight. The reason within me, if it is to triumph, must eliminate and suppress my lower instincts, my passions and desires, which render me a slave. Similarly, the fundamental transition from individual to social concepts uh, is almost imperceptible. The higher elements in society, the better educated, the more rational, those who possess the highest insight of their time and people may exercise compulsion to rationalize the irrational section of the society for so Hegel, Randley, 
both and quiet, uh, or often assured us, by obeying the rational mind, we'll obey ourselves. Now, indeed, as we are sunk in our ignorance and our passions, weak creatures afflicted by diseases and need a healer. Wars require a garden, but as we could be if we were rational as we would be even now. If only we would listen to the rational elements, which is ex hypothesis within every human being who deserves the name. The philosophers of object reason, from the tough, rigid, centralized, organic state of free chat, to the mild, the humane liberalism of a T.H. Green, certainly suppose themselves to be fulfilling and not resisting the rational demands which, however, in court, were to be found in the breasts of every sentient being. But I may reject such a democratic optimism and turning away from the theological determinism of the Heijing Lings towards some more voluntarist philosophy, conceive the idea of imposing on my, soci my society for its own betterment, a plan of my own, which, in my rational wisdom, I hand in liberty to the wish unless I act on my own pampers against the permanent wishes of the vast majority of my fellow citizens may never come to fruition at all, or abandoning the concept of reason altogether. I may conceive myself as an inspired artist with a moment to pattern in light for his unique vision, as painters combine colors or composer sounds. Humanity is a raw material upon which I impose my creative will. Even though men suffer and die in the process, they are lifted by it to a height which they could never reason without my coercive but a creative violation of the lights. This is the argument <coughs> used by every dictator, inquisitor, and bully who sees some moral or even aesthetic justification for his conduct must do for men or with them what they cannot do for themselves. And I cannot ask their permission or consent because they are in no condition to know what is best for them. Indeed, what they will permit except may mean a life of compatible mediocrity, or perhaps even the room and the suicide. Let me quote from the true progenitor of the heroic doctrine, Fritchet was again, no one has rights against reason. Man is afraid of subordinating his subjectivity to the laws of reason. He prefers tradition or arbitrariness. arbitrariness. Nevertheless, subordinated he must be, Fritchet puts forward the claim for what he called reason. In Poland, or Kalele, Kaleon, all romantic authoritarian, authoritarians, authoritarians may worship other values and see in their establishment by force the only path to true freedom. The same attitude was pointedly expressed by Oxen Comte, who asked if we do not allow free thinking in chemistry or biology, why should we love in morals or politics? Why indeed? If it makes sense to speak of political truths, assertions of social ends which all men, because they are men, must, once they are discovered, agree to be such, and if, as Comte believed, scientific method will, in due course, reveal them, then what case is there for freedom of opinion or action less as the end itself and not merely as a stimulating intellectual climate, either for individuals or for group. Why should any conduct be tolerated that is not authorized by property experts? 
command put bluntly, well as being implicit in the rationalist theory of political frame, uh, uh, rational theory of politics from its ancient Greek beginnings. There can, in principle, be only one correct way of life. Wise, lead it spontaneously. That is why they are called wise. The unwise must be dragged towards it by all the social means in the power of the wise. For why should the demonstrable era be suffered to survive and breed? The immature and untutored must be made to say to themselves, only the truth liberates. The only way in which I can learn the truth is by doing bondly today. Will you know it, order me, or coerce me to do in the certain knowledge that only thus will I write, and in your clear vision, I be free like you. We have wandered indeed from our liberal beginnings, this argument employed by Fichet in his latest phrase, and by after him by other defenders of authority, from Victorian schoolmasters and colonial administrators to the least nationalist or communist dictators, is precisely what the Stoic and King Ting morality protests against, most bitterly in the name of the reason of the free individual following his own inner light. In this way, the rationalist argument, which is assumption of the single true solution, has led by steps which, if not logically valid, are historically and psychologically intelligible from a ethical doctrine or individual responsibility, individual self-protection to a authoritarian state obedient to the directives of a elite of a platonic guardians. What can have led to so strange a reversal? The transformation of Kant's severe individualism into something close to a pure totalitarian doctrine on the part of a thinker, some of whom claim to be his disciples. The question is not of merely historical interest, for not the few contemporary liberals have gone through the same peculiar evolution. It is true, in Kant insisted the following rule, so what a capacity for rational self-direction belongs to all men, but there could be no experts in moral matters, since morality was a matter not for specialized knowledge, as utilitarians had uh, Philosophies had maintained, but for uh, the correct use of a uh, universal human faculty, the constantly when a made man free was not adding in certain self improving ways, which they could be coerced to do, when knowing why they ought to do so, which nobody could do for on um, behalf of uh, anyone else. But even Kant, when he came to deal with political issues, conceded that no law provided that it was such that I should, if I were asked, approve it as a rational being. Could it possibly deprive me of any portion of my rational freedom? With this door was open wide to the role of experts, I cannot consult all men about all enactments all the time. The government can be continuous plebiscite. Moreover, some men are not as well attuned to the voice of their own reason as others. Some think singularly deaf. If I am a legislator or ruler, I must assume that the law I impose is rational and I can only consult my own reason. He will automatically be approved by all the members of my society, so far as they are rational beings. For if they disprove, the must, provocando, be irrational, then they will need to be repressed by reason, where their own or mine cannot matter, for the pronouncements of reason must be the same in all minds. I insume others. If you resist, take it upon yourself to repress the rational elements in you which oppose, oppose the reason. My task would be easier if you repress it in yourself. I tried to educate you to do so, but I am that 
I'm re- but I am responsible for public welfare. I cannot wait until I'm a、uh, wholly rational. Can we project that is the essence of subject freedom is that he and he alone has given himself the order to obey. But this is a, a concept of a profession. If you fail to dis- discipline yourself, I must do so for you. You can't complain of lack of freedom. But the fact that Ken's rational judge has sent you to prison is evidence that you have not listened to your own inner reason, and that, like a child, a savage, an idiot, you are not ripe for self-direction, or permanently incapable of it. If it leads to despotism, albeit by the best of wise, it is to. Sarasho's temple in the magic fluid, but still despotism, which turns out to be identical with the freedom. Can it be that there is something amiss in the premises of the argument, that the basic assumptions are themselves somewhat at the fault? Let me state them once more. First, that all men have one true purpose. And the one only that of the rational self-direction. Second, that is the ends of all rational being must be of necessity fitting to a single universal harmonious pattern, which some men may be able to discern more clearly than others. Third, that all conflict, constantly all transit is due solely to the solely to the classical reason with the irrational or the insufficiently rational, the immature. And undeveloped elements of life, whether individual or communal, and then such classes are, in principle, awardable and for wholly rational beings, impossible. Finally, that when all men have been made rational, they obey the rational laws of their own natures, which are one and the same in them all. And so, be at once holy, law-abiding, the holy free. Can it be then, Socrates and the creators of the sensual Western tradition, ethics, or politics, will follow him, a mistake for more than two millennium? That the virtue is not knowledge, nor freedom identical with either. The desire,、uh, then, despite the fact, it rules the lives of more than men, of more. Uh, men than ever before. It's a long history. One of the basic assumptions of this famous view is demonstrable. All members, even true. Six. The search for standards.、Mm-hmm. Continue next time.